Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is uh, Rick Sander, and I, I'm the keyboard player of uh, Evergrey. And we're about to uh, release a new album called Theories of Emptiness. Beautiful, mate. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. This yeah. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So, as you mentioned, my friend, Evergrey released your 14 studio album, Theories of Emptiness, on June the 7th. So, after so many albums, my 14 is a lot. Like, after so many, do you, do you still get nervous in the lead up to a new release, or is it sort of like now, ah, you know, I've been there, done that? <laughs> yeah, I've been there, done that, but uh, I'm. <laughs> I'm still uh, we we still uh, we still put so much effort into uh, every album we do. Uh, I mean, it's um, we we always try to do our best, and we always try to top the previous albums. So of course we are uh, very anxious to see how it's going to be received, and um, yeah, we're always a little bit nervous, of course. Uh, because you really, we've been in the process for such a long time, so we really don't know. We we don't have like an objective side of it yet. So it's uh, it's it feels good when you start to get some good reviews and uh, <laughs> hear people liking it. So <laughs> it feel like the pressure uh, goes away a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so so on that subject, man, like fourteen albums is a hell of a lot, and. There's a lot more songs than that over 14 albums. So do you find that the, the more music you write and the more music you put out, like do you find it becomes easier or harder to come up with something that sort of sounds fresh and, and new to you the more you write? Well, it 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 could it could be, but uh, we always try to find new angles for every release. We try to do I mean, we're not going to change completely. We're still Evergrey and we're going to put out Evergrey music, but we try to find a new way of writing maybe just to try to keep it fresh. Uh, and I think the new angle on this album is is um, mostly that uh, Johan, our bass player, has uh, written a lot of music and he hasn't done that before. Okay. So that naturally made it a little bit uh, different, actually. So tell us a bit more about theories of emptiness from a musical point of view, mate, and what you're going for with the sound. Uh, we also changed uh, the the uh, mix uh, mixing guy. Uh, we had uh, Jacob Hansen, a very very good Danish uh, engineer, uh, who mixed our like last five albums or something. But we uh, we felt we uh, wanted to to. Um, develop in that department as well so we had an english guy called nolly get good and um that of course makes it a little bit different uh, and that what was the approach we want, wanted to make uh, it a bit different just to to uh, uh, uh making ourselves uh, ourselves uh, more um, how do you say uh, I don't know to, to uh, <laughs> I can't find English words right now, but uh, uh, surprise ourselves a little bit, yeah. I would say. Very cool. Yeah. So, along those lines, like, how would you say that this album differs musically to your previous album, A Heartless Portrait? It's 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 a bit hard to say. I mean, it's it, we we all. Our main focus is to write good songs and do the music the best we can. Um, and then, then it's always different eras of our lives. And um, so, so it naturally, it, something uh, new will happen. And uh, like I said, Joan wrote a lot of songs on this album that I think made the sound a little bit different. Uh, but I mean, we're still the same guys playing the instruments. Uh, the same guy singing the songs, so you're not going to hear that much of a change. Uh, but uh, hopefully, people feel that it's fresh. Although we we uh, released so many albums, uh, hopefully people will think this this one also will have a contribution for our catalog. Oh. Um, an, an early review that I read of the album. 
has called it possibly your best album ever. Like, and I know you're going to be biased, <laughs> mate, but would you agree with that? Like, do you feel that strongly about it? It's it's it, this early. It's impossible to say. Yeah, because uh, it, it's like when 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 we, when we finish an album, it's like yeah, we we think we think we've done our best. We think this is good. But when people say this is our best, I mean that's not that's nothing that you, I don't know. It's it, it's a surprise that yeah. people feel that after after so many albums that we still can make our best album. It's <laughs> uh, it's it feels it feels very unreal actually. I, I, I for me it was like yeah I, I think it's a decent album. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <Okay. laughs> so I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit yeah I got some some good tunes you know so <laughs> so when when people when people say things like that I get really surprised actually. That's good. Uh, the album closes with the song "A Theory of Emptiness," but there's no track actually called "Theories of Emptiness." Like I know it's only a small discrepancy in titles, but I'm guessing that means it's the actual title of the album's got a a bit more meaning because there's no song named directly after it. No, exactly, and and the 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 whole lyric thing is is um, is more or less Tom Tom's uh, our our lead singer. It's his area all the way. He writes like hundred percent of the lyrics in previous albums. Uh, maybe some. Uh, other guys have wrote a few some lyrics as well but but uh, at this stage he writes uh, all the lyrics um so it's it's hard for me to get into yeah. uh at the actual meanings of uh, those things why that song is called uh, and it, it i mean it's an instrumental and it's it's called theories of emptiness uh but but uh yeah, it's 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 more more a question for for him to answer actually. I'm probably just I'm probably just reading far too much into it. It's probably just a spelling mistake. Yeah, yeah. Pick up on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, the, the album features guest vocals by uh, Jonas Ren Renksy from Catatonia. Like, why why choose choose him as a guest vocalist, and what did he bring to the sound? Well, we it we, kind of a coincidence. Um, he was involved in the Arium project, uh -huh. uh, Lucas Arium, uh, and so was uh, Tom. So they met at uh, at the concert uh, at the show where uh, they had they they were doing together and became kind of friends. And and uh, Tom just asked him, "Hey, what do you say? Do you want to be on our next album?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." And I mean, it was wasn't more complicated than that. It was nothing that we had uh, really didn't discuss uh, with the band. It was more more like, yeah, why not? Let's try it. We love Catatonia, uh, and I think he likes Heavy Gray as well. So, so it was just the uh, good timing to try try it out. And I think uh, the result was really good. Uh, it became uh, a really, really nice song, and it was it's really cool to hear uh, jo Jonas uh, growl again. So <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> now we sort of touched on this a little bit before, mate. But I read a quote from Tom that that said, "With each album, we strive to introduce something new." So, what what is that something new that specifically that you've introduced for this album? Well, I. If you can find something new, I, I would I would say again that it's uh, Johan's uh, our bass player's contribution in the songwriting. I think that's the 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 most new on this album because he he hasn't really written any songs on previous albums. Uh, so that was kind of a surprise for for all of us as well when he introduced all those uh, ideas. Uh, and we were like, oh damn, we have not we have a full album here with uh, ideas that you came up with. So, more or less. So, uh, I think that's the new thing about this album, and that we also change uh, the guy who mixed the album. Uh, I think that that makes a difference because we used to have Jacob Hansen for such such a long time. So, I think that's uh, makes made a change as well. Oh no. I'm I'm no musician, bro, so I can't actually quite get my head around this. And I'm thinking there'll be other people out there too. But 
Well, when you say that, like, how can how can a different person writing the songs have an impact on the sound of the album? Well, it's it's um, when you have when you have someone who's written a lot of lot of songs, you kind of get familiar with it, oh, yeah. and you. Uh, and when you put when you're going to do like uh, vocal lines uh, and and instrumental parts it's it's familiar uh, if you have a guy who you haven't heard uh, uh, written a song for you before it fe it feels new and fresh okay. and you really don't know how to how to uh, how to approach it and that's a good thing because then you will find something new about it so I think uh, that, that's the reason why we feel that it's a little bit new. Maybe the fans won't uh, hear that, but for us, for us, it was kind of um, fresh to to have that new approach. Mm, that makes a lot more sense when you put it like that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There's there's an interesting sentence in the press release that says that the, the tracks are created to balance each other mutually. Like what? What does what does that actually mean? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what the fancy phrases just... assistants put in. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't write that. So, uh, I, I, um, I, I mean, it's it sounds beautiful. You all, <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah. Maybe that was it. It sounds just. It sounds good. <laughs> we'll just leave but, it at that. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, but 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 of course, you when you when you put an album together, you try to to have the songs in an order that will fit for. It's, so, so, I mean, we make albums. We don't make singles. Yeah. Uh, so we want we want to the the listener to feel that from the first song to the last song that that it feels like it fits together. Uh, so, so maybe, maybe that's what it means. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's, what's next for, uh, for Evergrey after the album comes out, mate? Are they, are they sending out on a world tour to promote it? Yeah, we have a lot of gigs coming up. We're going to South America in a few weeks. Uh, and then we uh, be back in Europe and do a lot of festivals. Uh, and then we have like a Scandinavian tour in September, and then we have uh, a European tour in the fall. Uh, and that's about it for this year. Next year, I don't really know the plans, but uh, that's about it for for this year, the plans right. for this year. Sounds like you better get some rest in now, mate, while you can. you got a busy hour sending yeah. up. De yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's <laughs> going to be very busy. <laughs> Very good. All right, Rickard, thanks very much for your time today, mate. Been a pleasure speaking with you. Theories of Emptiness is out on June the 7th, and she's another cracker of an album from Evergrey. Like, you guys are one of those bands that just consistently get better, mate. I don't know how you do it, but keep <laughs> doing it. <laughs>